So, in this video, we're going to go and look at gas exchange in the avioli. A lot of what we're going to be talking about is more applicable for people doing A-levels, but if you're doing GCSEs, it will work just as well. The best way to use this video is to go and follow the link below and download the worksheet with the structured questions on that go with it. When watching the video, if you need to pause it at certain points to go and fill out parts of the worksheets, that would help. So at each stage, you will be filling out the short answer questions, which you can then use to help you construct a full rounded answer for the long answered question on the left hand side. So this will help improve your exam technique and should help you gain more marks when it's coming to answering questions, especially looking at gas exchange in the avioli. So the first thing that we really need to consider is ventilation in the lungs. So we need to remember that oxygen is entering the lungs from the air outside. Carbon dioxide is exiting the body through the lungs. So we go, the tube leading down into it is called the trachea. Then you've got the bronchies that branch off from that, further into the bronchioles, all the way down to the avioles at the end, right? The avioles are the small air sacs where gas exchange is going to take place. So the avioles, we've got lots and lots of them, and basically all they are are tiny, tiny air sacs. Because we've got lots of them, that goes and drastically increases the amount of surface area we've got for gas exchange to take place in the lungs. It's really important that when you go in and talking about and answering questions on gas exchange, you are always relating things back to surface area. If you also look at the structure of the avioli, there's a good network of capillaries which go and bring deoxygenated blood to them and oxygenated blood gets taken away, which can then go back down to the heart and is recirculated around the body. So, if we go and start talking about the adaptations of avioli in general. So, the avioli is all about gas exchange, and we're talking about gas exchange from the air that you're breathing in, into the bloodstream and vice versa. So the fact that we've got good ventilation in the lungs, so lots of air from the outside is being brought in, lots of air that's stuck in it is being forced back out, helps bring oxygen into the avioli and gets rid of the carbon dioxide that's there. That all goes and helps with concentration gradients, which we'll talk about briefly a bit further on. So, one of the other adaptations of avioli is that they've got a moist inner lining. Right? All that moist inner lining is there for is to speed up gas exchange. Right? And it does this because the gases in the air are more likely to go and diffuse into a moist layer rather than diffusing straight into a cell. So that layer of moisture is there to enable gases to dissolve into it, which therefore increases gas exchange within each avioli. The next thing that we need to think about is that the physical distance in between the air that's coming in and leaving the avioli and the bloodstream is very, very short. So this is short diffusion distance. Right? This is because the avioli wall is only one cell thick. And the walls of the capillary going around it are also only one cell thick. So the total diffusion distance from the air into the blood is only about two cells. So the diffusion distance is very, very short. Remember, the shorter the diffusion distance, the greater the rate of diffusion that will take place. While we're on diffusion, it's also worth noting down what diffusion is. So you need to remember that diffusion is the passive movement. So it doesn't require any energy. So it's the passive movement of a substance from an area of 
high concentration to an area of lower concentration. So the next thing is the fact that there is this good circulation. So we're constantly having lots of deoxygenated blood brought into the capillaries that's going around the alveoli and the oxygenated blood from where the red blood cells have picked up the oxygen is being recirculated out. Because this is happening really quickly, it helps maintain that concentration gradient. So there is always going to be more oxygen or a greater concentration of oxygen inside the air sacs, so inside the alveoli, than in the bloodstream. So you'll constantly get oxygen diffusing into the blood, being picked up by the haemoglobin, and vice versa, carbon dioxide diffusing back out. So all of these things help maintain a concentration gradient. So that good blood supply, like we've talked about, helps maintain that concentration gradient. So oxygen always moves into the blood, carbon dioxide always moves out, because the oxygenated blood is always taken away, and the deoxygenated blood coming from the body is continuously brought to replace it. Inside of the alveoli, we're maintaining that concentration gradient because the carbon dioxide is being taken away by the ventilation system, so therefore it reduces its concentration, and it's being replaced by fresh air from the outside, so the oxygen concentration within that is always going to be higher, so oxygen will always go and diffuse into the bloodstream. So, just to recap on the key features in the alveoli that enable gas exchange. Remember that we've got good ventilation, there's good circulation, you need to talk about large surface areas, that moist inner lining, the fact that we've got a short diffusion distance, you need to constantly refer to concentration gradients, and talk about movements of gases in terms of carbon dioxide moving out of the blood, oxygen moving in. So, the long answer question on the sheet that hopefully you will have downloaded is that the alveoli of human lungs are clustered together in alveoli sacs. These clusters are commonly said to resemble clusters of grape, and a nearly spherical alveoli appear to bud away from stems. Describe in detail how the blood becomes oxygenated in the lungs. So the key words within that is the fact that you need to talk about the alveoli, you need to talk about the lungs, and you need to talk about how the blood is becoming oxygenated. So go back in the video and look at how the different adaptations are going in enabling oxygen to move from the air that's being breathed in into the bloodstream. So finally, thanks for watching. Make sure that if you're unsure about anything, you go back, re-watch it, make sure that you're pausing the video, and any questions that you have, please put in the comment section below.